Hi, welcome to the technical webinar organized by LTA DBC. In this presentation, I'll be sharing the amendments made to rapid transit system development and building works in railway corridor and railway protection zone regulations, or DBW in short, and the new launchment scheme proposed by LTA. Firstly, I will give you a brief background on what is regulated under the DBW regulation, following which I will highlight the key amendments under the regulations and guide you through how these changes will impact the way of making submissions to LTA. This will include the new lodgement scheme and the submission requirements. Finally, I will share with you the expected implementation timeline for the changes. The DBW regulation was last updated in 2002 with the aim to regulate development, building and engineering works fall within the railway protection zone and railway corridor. Both railway protection zone and railway corridor refer to the 40 meter zone from the outermost edge of MRT structure. The difference is that the railway protection zone refers to MRT lines in operation and railway corridor refers to 40 MRT lines under constructions. The DBW regulation also intended to safeguard the integrity of railway structures, the conducting of railway operations, and safety of passengers. The new amendments this year allows LTA to refine and update the processes, procedures, and requirements so that they are in line with current industry practice. In addition, as part of LTA's border transformation movement to streamline and simplify our regulatory processes, LTA proposed to implement a launchment scheme to expedite the plan approval process for selected category of works that involve minimum risk within the railway partition zone. There are a total five major amendments in DBW Regulation 2021. The first major amendment pertains to unauthorized works. The title of current Regulation 3 has been amended from unauthorized development or building works to obligations relating to development and building works. This new title reflects the appointed QP's inherent obligations to supervise the de development and building works. This is in addition to the existing requirements whereby the development and building works must be carried out in, in accordance with an approved proposal and valid engineering work permit. There is no change to the current submission requirements or procedures. The second major amendment pertains to the application for approval of plans. Regulation 4 of DBW has been amended to separately set up the requirements for application of development proposal, building proposal, and lodgement scheme under new Regulation 4, 5, and 19. The revised Regulation 4 and 5 have been, also, have been updated to reflect the interagency workflow that LTA has with URA and PCA. Regulation 19 is introduced to facilitate the implementation of the new lodgement scheme. Under the lodgement scheme, LTA grants a notice of approval without checking the details of the application. If the application is accompanied by a declaration from the QP appointed by the developer. I'll be sharing more details on the lodgement scheme in the latter part of my presentations. As mentioned earlier, the revised regulation 4 reflects the interagency workflow between LTA and URA. QP needs to ensure that the application for approval of development proposal 
is submitted only after the application for planning permission for the development is made to URA. Please note that the application must be made and signed by the QP appointed by the developer and accompanies with a copy of valid PP or WP from URA. Similarly, under the revised Regulation 5, the appointed QP may submit the application for approval of building proposal to LTA at the same time as the plans for the building works are submitted to BCA. QPs are reminded to submit the BP application before the end of the 12-month period, commencing from the date of develop development proposal was approved by LTA. Once again, all applications must be made and signed by the QP appointed by the developer. This diagram shows the overall submission process regulated under the DBW regulation. A development proposal is required for all developments fall within the railway petition zone and railway corridor. Building proposals are only applicable for proposed development involve building works. Otherwise, the appointed QP may proceed to apply for permit to carry out engineering works under the new regulation 9 and 10. Please note that application for LTS CSC is not required if the proposed development does not involve building works. The third major amendment relates to the engineering work permit. Regulation 6 has been further revised into new Regulation 9 and 10 separately. This is with further specification that the permit is actually an engineering work permit. The revised regulation also set out the application process with greater specification of required supporting documents. Under the new changes, LTA allows the supporting documents to be prepared and signed by other qualified persons. However, the application for permit to carry out engineer work must still be made and signed by the QP appointed by the developer. This is similar to what has been practiced by the industry today and the list of required documents can be found in the code practice for railway petition. The fourth amendment in DBW pertains to the validity of approval granted by LTA. The title of Regulation 7 has been amended to Time for Commencement for Development or Building Works under the new Regulation 8. To take note that the validity of planned approval has been delinked from BCA's grant of permit date. The new Regulation 8 now refers to LTA's own grant of development proposal approval, which is valid for 24 months. Extension of validity is allowed, subject to LTA's review and approval. All applications for extension must be made at least one month before the end of the 24-month period. The 24-month validity will be lapsed if there is an approval for building proposal and if the, the associated engineer work has been commenced on site. The application for approval of building proposal must be made within 12 months from the date when a DP approval is granted. Else, a fresh application for DP approval is required before BP application can be submitted. Please note that the development or building works must start before the end of 24 months with a valid engineering work permit. The Fifth Amendment pertains to the requirements for appointment of qualified persons. The new Regulation 11 and 12 contain updates to the current Regulation 9. For instance, 
New Regulation 11 specifies the processes and criteria for persons who adequately qualified for carrying out supervision role for development, building works, and engineering works. New Regulation 12 and the schedule specifies processes for changes in the appointment of qualified persons, including when and whom to inform LTA of such changes. The following diagram provides developer an overview of the timing and personnel to be appointed as the qualified person. In scenario 1, if the development involves building works, the developer must appoint an architect to supervise the development and building works. At the same time, the developer should appoint a professional engineer, SIVA, to supervise engineering work under the development. If the development involves basement excavation works, a PE job must also be engaged by the developer. In scenario 2, if the development does not involve building works, the developer can appoint a PE to supervise both the development and engineering work. So far, I have highlighted the major changes under the new DBW regulations. Now, I'm pleased to share with you on LTA's proposed lodgement scheme. In my earlier mention, the lodgement scheme which applies only to application of LTS DP and BP approval within the Railway Protection Zone, allows LTA to grant instant approval based on QP's self-declaration for compliance. The industry can look forward to a faster turnaround time to, faci to facilitate developments to commence works earlier. As you may also be aware, we will be transiting to Connect2 shortly. During the transition period, LTA will issue the notice of approval within three working days from the date of lodgement. An instant notice of approval will be issued when Connect2 is in effect. I will be sharing more on the Connect submission letter in my presentation. Please be reminded that the lodgement scheme does not apply to engineer work submissions and applications for CSC. LTA will still review the details before granting the engineering work permit or CSC approvals. In addition, do ensure that you have made an accurate declaration in your lodgement submissions. LTA reserves the right to revoke our DP or BP approvals if false declaration is found during the engineer work or CSC stage. In addition, application for permit to carry out engineering work will be rejected. QP will then be required to make a fresh lodgement submission. The following table provides the list of developments eligible for Launchman Scheme. For non-LTA projects, developments with no basement with site boundary located 20 meters away from the outermost edge of RTA structures and fulfill the following criteria are allowed to make Launchman submissions. Similarly, LTA projects listed below are eligible for lodgement submissions. In the next two slides, I will be sharing the details on how QPs can make a lodgement submission for development and building proposals via Connect. There are different versions of LTA e-forms available on Connect, depends on when the lodgement scheme is implemented. Please check the e-forms before making a lodgement submissions. When using LTA DBC Rails XFD, 
which is a connect one form. QP is required to prepare the following. A cover letter, a copy of valid URIs PP or WP, plans for proposed development with clear indication of railway partition lines and railway structures, plans, elevations and sections, clearly indicating the distance between the site boundary and the outermost edge of RTS structures, which must be more than 20 meters. Finally, endorse form LTA DB serial launchment in PDF. This copy of decoration form can be found in LTA website. With the above documentation in order, QP is required to submit the launchment application with the required documents via ES Pro. LTA internal system will register the applications as soon as it's received from Connect. QP is expected to receive DP or BP NOA within three working days from the date which LTA receives the application in its systems. When using LTA DBC Rails XFDX, which is a Connect2 form, QP is required to prepare the same set of documents mentioned earlier, except for the endorsed form LTA DBC Rail Lodgement. This QP decoration form is not required as the decoration process has been incorporated in Connect to eForm. QP will then submit the lodgement application with the required documents via ES Pro. LTA internal system will register the applications once it's received from Connect and issue the approval automatically. QP is expected to receive DP or BP NOA instantly. Last but not least, it's very important for all QPs to know that in case where non-compliance or false declaration is filed during engineer work stage, LTA officers will perform the following. 1. Inform QP that the DP or BP NOA, which was granted under the lodgement scheme, will be revoked. 2. Inform QP to make a fresh lodgement for DP or BP. Lastly, reject the engineering work submission without review or any comments. Engineering work application will only be allowed to be submitted after DP, BP, NOA is granted. The amendments to the DBW regulation, including lodgement scheme, will be implemented by end of September 2021. For more details, please refer to a circular which LTA will be issuing on 1st September 2021. I have come to the end of my presentations regarding this topic. For any queries, please do not hesitate to fill up the feedback form by scanning the QR code on the screen. Thank you for your attention.